Hi friends, it's Queen Alita. I'm back today with a prophetic message from the Lord. Hi friends, before I continue with the message, please do not be deterred by the length of this video. It is so important that you watch this video to the end. There are things that happen towards the end of this video that even I did not expect. So watch it to the end and please share this message. The Lord is not playing. This is deep. It is heavy because he did not let me not share this message. Like I was trying to wait and see like, wait, what exactly am I hearing? And the Lord said, read, just read the scriptures, read the scriptures I've given you <laughs> and I'll speak as you go. So please do not be deterred by the length and make sure that you share this message. It is important. It is a big one. Today is mostly going to be just read out of the word of God. Um, but I want to give you guys some background before I read the message that the Lord has for us. So I just want to welcome you back. Welcome, everybody. And if you're new, you're most welcome. I'm not going to do a disclaimer today because this message is heavy. This message is... It's not for everybody. But in a way, it is. There is a specific... Um, there are specific people the Lord is talking to through this message... But at the same time, it's for everybody. I hope that makes sense. So um, the only thing I can say is ask the Lord <laughs> to to search your own heart, you know, and and just see what He's saying to you with regards to to today's message. So last week, sometime, I'm not even sure what I was listening to, but scriptures were being read and what the one that really stood out was first corinthians 18 no 6 verse 18 sorry first corinthians 6 verse 18 and as the scripture was being read i was just receiving this deep revelation from the lord now i'm going to read the scripture to you and <laughs> and then explain to you what I was hearing. Let me just read it and do that. Okay, so run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. And then verse 19 as well. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Now, we all know that that scripture has to do with sexual immorality, right? But when I was listening to it being read, I heard very clearly the Lord just frame it in a way that it just was like, oh, wow. Um, so... I'm not even sure how to deliver this because I'm just still um, thinking about... Anyway, let me just say it. So when it got to the part that says no other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does, I heard body of Christ. I heard the church. And immediately the Lord started to download how the, the heads, the people who are running the churches the pastors, the, the leadership, the elders, whatever you call them in your church, they are, <laughs> God is speaking to them right now. Um, and it just really like jolted me. I was just like, what? Because all I could see and envision as the scripture was being read was the church being affected because of the leadership, the elders, the the whatever, apostles, the prophets, the people that are leading and heading up the churches, um, the pastors, sorry, of course, the pastors, how could I forget that one, bishops, everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean all those titles, you know, all the people with the positions and the titles. And I just kept sensing that, obviously we know this because we've seen, we've seen the exposure that's been happening with um, people in those positions within the church, people that we, that many, let me not say we, let's just say that many looked at and admired and followed and thought, you know, these are true men and women of God. And the Lord was just ministering to me how much immorality 
is happening um, within those levels. And like I said, stuff has come out over the years, especially in recent times. And I'm not here to name names and be like, God showed me this one and God showed me that one. The Lord has never like put it on my heart to to call people's names out. And I'm not saying that he never will. I don't know what God is going to do, what he'll have me doing. But right now, it's a warning to the leaders because what they are doing, all that sexual immorality is affecting the body. Now, let's read that scripture again. And as I read it, think about it in the context that God gave it to me, the body being the church, being you and me, being the people, and um, this message being addressed to the leaders run from sexual sin no other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body (sighs) don't you realize that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who lives in you and was given to you by god so every congregation all the people gathered together who make up the church, who make up the body of Christ are the temple, right? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hence, it, you know, so many things just became so clear. Um, why it was called church is because this is where the Holy Spirit dwells. It was never about the building. The building was just a place where people can just meet. You know, it could have been outside under a tree, but it would have been called church because the body was there, the people were there where the Holy Spirit dwelt, right? And is is trying to dwell. But right now, the way the churches are, there is so much sexual sin in the, 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 the leadership of the church. Um, all of that is going on and therefore, how can the Holy Spirit dwell in a temple that is affected in such an immoral way, right? So let's keep reading here. Um, you do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Now, these leaders are not honoring God with his people, with his church, with his body. They are defiling the body of Christ. And, you know, the body, the people, us, we can sit back and say, oh, well, you know, it's not my fault. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a congregant. I'm just a member. No, you are being defiled. There, there is, you're being put in a position where the wrath of God can, can affect you as well, which leads me to the main scripture. Actually, no, let me not say the main scripture, which leads me to the other scripture that the Lord wanted me to read. Because sometimes we can think that, oh, well, you know, it's just the that pastor was exposed and this apostle was exposed and therefore they're the one um, who who will face uh, God's judgment and wrath. But really, when we are under people, we get affected. That's why they have such a great responsibility. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, um, you know, people in leadership positions within the church having a harsher judgment um, because of the responsibility, because of all the lives that they influence, right? So let's read Jeremiah chapter 14. I'm going to read the whole chapter. And I'm reading from my NLT Bible simply because it's easier to read, um, but yeah, I don't know if you guys know, um, I'm a KJV girl, but I've just, the NLT spoiled me because it's so easy to read. So I'm not going to read my KJV today, but yeah, let's, let's read the message. This message came to Jeremiah from the Lord explaining why he was holding back the rain. <laughs> you know, when I read, listened to it earlier, cause I was listening to the audio Bible earlier, Um, just that first line alone, verse one alone, you know, this message came to Jeremiah from the Lord explaining why he was holding back the rain. The rain (laughs) is the Holy Spirit. There is, how can the Holy Spirit dwell in a temple? How can the Holy Spirit be in a church that is defiled? That is sexually defiled, sexually immoral. And that part is not um, symbolic. There is a lot of sexual sin happening in the leadership of many churches. A lot of churches, the Lord says. 
and because of that the lord has to hold back the rain it's like the holy spirit cannot dwell in those spaces right verse 2 judah wilts commerce at the city gates grinds to a halt all the people sit on the ground in mourning and a great cry rises from jerusalem the nobles send servants to get water but all the wells are dry the servants return with empty jugs confused and desperate covering their heads in grief the ground is parched and the cracked sorry and cracked for lack of rain the farmers are deeply troubled they too cover their heads even the doe abandons her newborn fawn because there is no grass in the field the wild donkeys stand on the bare hills panting like thirsty jackals they strain their eyes looking for grass but there is none to be found <laughs> i have to stop here because as i'm reading it i'm just getting even more revelation how everything that we do affects so much around us if you have a leader who is pastoring a church and they are living a sexually immoral life <laughs> even god's creation is affected it's they you can't do things behind closed doors in the secret in the dark and think that because no one sees this double life that i'm living no one sees what's happening in the closet or behind the closed door um and all they see is me standing at the pulpit on sunday preaching up a storm getting everybody excited and riled up and you know getting the crowds cheering you know as long as people see that that's good you know i'm 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 doing something and they think that they they're affecting change like like they're bringing something good to the table but no everything is is affected the nature and creation is even affected here we are the word of god says it you know um <laughs> there's no water in the walls they're dry empty jugs you know it's, uh, yeah you get the point um so let's keep reading the people say our wickedness has caught up with us lord but help us for the sake of your own reputation we have turned away from you and sinned against you again and again <sighs> oh hope of israel our savior in times of trouble why are you like a stranger to us why are you like a traveler passing through the land stopping only for the night are you also confused <laughs> is our champion helpless to save us you are right here among us lord we are known as your people please don't abandon us now this is heartbreaking to read because <laughs> all of this wickedness which has been happening occurring all this abounding wickedness has been done willfully we all have choices to make in this life and you know verse 7 says the people say our wickedness has caught up with us lord they knew what they were doing these leaders know what they're doing and because of what they're doing the flock has been doing the same thing they're affected because of the spirit that's operating the spirit of immorality operating in the churches affecting everybody and everything around them affecting creation and nature around them and now when so what the lord was ministering to me as I was um you know what let me just take you a few steps back before i finish reading this chapter yesterday i opened my bible i was asking the lord about what was i asking him about Okay, this is something that you'll see later on on my channel. I was asking him specifically about that and he said open the Bible. So I opened it and I opened it right to this page, this very page. And I thought, okay. Ugh, this is heavy. Like maybe I opened the wrong page. <laughs> so let me just keep looking for something that's going to answer this question that i'm asking him and 
He said, get that the Bible. So I opened that the Bible. I kid you not, the exact same chapter, Jeremiah 14. And I was like, okay, now I'm paying attention. Now I know you're speaking to me. And I just, I read it and it just was like intense. And I just kept thinking about 1 Corinthians um, 7 that I had been listening to uh, last week that just kept coming like really strong. Like it's related to that. It's related to that. And I was like, what? And so I left it alone. I'm like, let me just, let me just sit on this for a little bit. Maybe I'll share this message in a few days, maybe next week. (laughs) Today, somebody was, we were sharing scriptures in a group setting and I shared by scripture. Many people did. And the last person to share a scripture was like Jeremiah 14 verse whatever and I was like okay okay today's the day there's like three times Jeremiah 14 has come up so that's how serious the Lord is I just wanted I forgot to say that at the beginning of of the reading this is how serious God is like I was trying to like look for a dream and be like okay so which dream are we gonna look at today and share a message to the people and I just it was just silence on that front like the lord always guides me and leads me to a dream this time it was silent it just kept coming back to jeremiah 14 so this is serious um the leaders are doing the things that they're doing it's affecting the congregation it's affecting the body of christ it's affecting the church um and people think that because they're not the ones you know in that leadership position that oh they're good but it's affecting them and a lot of people don't realize that the life that they're living is is not pleasing to god just today i heard someone sharing some issue that they were having with their marriage and um it was it was very intimate what they were sharing and this was online it was like a podcast or something so it's not anybody i know but um she's like oh i'm a christian but then she goes on to say, talk about how her and her husband had this great um, intimate life. Let's call it intimate life. You know, they, they went all the way before marriage and they did it for a long time. And she's like, yeah, it was great before. And now that we're married, it's like everything just shut down. And I'm like, did she just say she's a Christian? And she's sharing that part as if, well, oh, that's normal and that's okay mind blown mind boggled and i get it i do get it because i was once that christian who thought it was okay i really thought it was okay as long as i was with one person donkey years ago that was my thinking so i wasn't like judging her but i was like opening my eyes up to how deceived people are and it's because the people at the top are not teaching they're not calling out they're not they're not leading the way that they should be. They're not leading by example. So I'm going to keep reading. Verse 10. So this is what the Lord says to his people. Now the people have said, God, our wickedness has caught up with us. Why have you turned against us? You're like a traveler passing through the land, you know, stopping only for the night. Are you also confused? Like the nerve to ask God if he's confused is our champion helpless to save us. So the people are like, please do something. Like you can't abandon us now, even though they have said you know we've been wicked we know and it's caught up with us so verse 10 says so this is what the lord says to his people you love to wander far from me and do not restrain yourselves therefore i will no longer accept you as my people now i will remember all your wickedness and will punish you for your sins this is serious there is something that is happening um in this world right now that is going to take it's going to take us by surprise because we're not paying attention to where God is and you know I'm not saying that everybody's just like blind and you know we're all just out here fornicating and doing all of these immoral things I'm saying that there are people within the churches who are misled by sexually deviant leaders who are affecting them and therefore they're going down with those leaders because of just ignorance and ignorance i've come to understand 
ignorance to be a choice really like and and i know people are different i'm the type of person who wants to know everything if a new subject comes up and i'm interested i will research that thing until i can't research it any further i like to know stuff i need to know which is the right way is this the right way then let's go this way you know I, that's just me not that i'm perfect not holier than anybody out here but ignorance cannot be an excuse we cannot be like well i don't know you know i, I thought my pastor was pure or whatever you know and meanwhile because of that lifestyle that your pastor is living you have some things in your closet you know anyway let's go back to the scripture reading so um verse 11 is tough it says then the lord says said to me speaking to jeremiah do not pray for these people anymore when they fast i will pay no attention when they present their burnt offerings and grain offerings to me i will not accept them instead i will devour them with war famine and disease these things are coming the book of revelation speaks about all the wars all the famine all the disease that's coming it's in prophecy it's in the bible it's coming we cannot sit here and think that oh you know god has given me all these wonderful promises my life is going to be great those promises are for you to be able to do the kingdom work right so uh, let me put this in a better way because <laughs> i'm getting passionate here now the lord wants to bless you you know it's his delight he delights in it like any parent would we want to see our children happy we want to give them everything we want to see them thrive we want to see them succeed right um but there are other children who are making things very very difficult in this world they're making things unpleasant and um the children that are doing the right thing need to understand that there's work to be done okay that we cannot separate ourselves and say well you know at least i've accepted jesus christ and i obey him every day and i'm this and i'm that we have to be in the trenches we have to be going in and taking territory for the lord and not just thinking that god is going to bless us with all these wonderful things and we're just going to be you know doing our own thing in our happy corner here we live in this world where people are dying every day and they're being lost a lot of souls are being lost and we need to be on top of our game we need to be um asking god where do you need me to be today what do i need to be doing today lord and as you go about those things he's going to bless you he's going to bring all your blessings right so it's important that we don't get stuck in this oh i just want to be blessed and i'm going to be blessed we also understand the times we read the signs we know where we are because then we're going to be caught off guard and probably get caught up with the rest of the people who the lord is referring to here you know the ones that he's saying to jeremiah do not pray for these people anymore right so anyway let's keep reading um then i said oh sovereign lord their prophets are telling them all is well no war or famine will come the lord will surely send peace right then the lord said these prophets are telling lies in my name i did not send them or tell them to speak i did not give them any messages they prophesy of visions and revelations they have never seen or heard they speak foolishness made up in their own lying hearts therefore this is what the lord says mm and before, let me let me just stop there you know just speaking on that as i was reading that <laughs> guys the first time i when the lord brought me to jeremiah 14 yesterday i was like god i'm so sorry am i that prophet and you, yeah i just had a moment and he just kept bringing it back like i i showed you guys like i told you guys you know he kept pointing me back to jeremiah 14 and bringing that other scripture I need you to give this message to the leaders, the elders, the the pastors, the people that are running the churches, the leaders, the eldership, that whole group. This is their message. And so it became clear to me that he's referring to those people in those positions because they prophesy too. 
a lot of the times when you watch the sermons, um, they'll be preaching and, and giving their message, which is dynamic, which is engaging, and then they'll throw in a prophecy or throw in a prophecy there about, um, you know, the great things that God is going to do in your life. And God does want to do great things in your life, but he's also, he also has to do some cleaning up. He has to bring, uh, he has to allow the wars and the famine. He has to destroy the evil, right, that has taken over this land. And if he sits back and says, well, I'm just going to bless everybody because they go to church, because at least they're plugged into a Bible-believing church, you know, all these wonderful things that we hear all the time, then he's going to perpetuate evil because people are not living a repentant lifestyle. People are you know, on the surface, on the outside, everything looks great. I, I look good. I'm dressed modestly. I am I look like I'm serving. Well, probably serving the church and everything. But when I get home, when I close my door at night and I get on my laptop, I'm consumed with whatever. You know, people find a lot of entertaining things to do that are just an abomination to the Lord, right? So... Yeah, just just that point of the leaders. The leaders are leading people astray. You know, prophets are leaders too. You know, people in the office of prophet are leaders too. So, um, yeah, the Lord says they prophesy of visions and revelations they have never seen or heard. They speak foolishness made up in their own lying hearts. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will punish these lying prophets for they have spoken in my name, even though I never sent them. They say that no war or famine will come, but they themselves will die by war and famine. Hmm. As for the people to whom they prophesy, this is the part that got me because it's like, again, we're all held accountable. We all need to um, work out our salvation, our own salvation. Uh, with fear and trembling and not just sit back and say well the pastor said and the prophet led me this way and this one said that no as for the people to whom they prophesy their bodies will be thrown out into the streets of jerusalem victims of famine and war there'll be no one left to bury them mm. husbands wives sons and daughters all will be gone for i will pour out their own wickedness on them now, Jeremiah, say this to them, night and day, my eyes overflow with tears. Mm. I cannot stop weeping for my virgin daughter, my precious people has been struck down and lies mortally wounded. If I go out into the fields, I see the bodies of people slaughtered by the enemy. If I walk the city streets, I see people who have died of starvation. The prophets and priests continue with their work, but they don't know what they're doing. Mm. Jesus. Oof. Okay, yeah, I just, I feel the, the presence of the Holy Spirit so heavy right now. That's the word of the Lord, people. The prophets and priests continue with their work, but they don't know what they're doing. Oof, that really... Okay, Holy Spirit. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's anything else for me to say. Uh, the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord has spoken. Um, so I will see you all in the next video. I'm going to continue to meditate on this passage of scripture, continue to just seek the Lord. Yeah. Friends, I, I, I really hope that this, this message has blessed you. God, God really is a good father. Like he loves us and he cares for us and he wants to see us overcome everything that the devil is throwing our way and people are asleep people just want the easy way they they just don't want to they don't want to put in the work yeah all right y'all